This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everybody. My name is Patrick Gilchrist. I'm the Warning Coordination Meteorologist with the National Weather Service in Glasgow, Montana, and this is your Drought and Climate Outlook Briefing for Eastern Montana. Today is April 22nd, Friday, uh, 2022, and uh, with that, we'll be also discussing our upcoming blizzard situation. So again, all this information is current as of uh, Friday morning, April 22nd. So a quick look back at our historic blizzard event, April 12th through the 14th. Uh, you know, this overall did provide some relief uh, from some of our drought concerns for some portions of eastern Montana. Um, however, it's uh, really not enough to overcome the uh, long-term drought uh, that we find ourselves in. So again, good news as far as the precipitation totals go, but ideally um, it would have for fallen in the form of rain, but instead we got snow. And of course that was of high impact uh, to travelers, to uh, people living in North Dakota and uh, far eastern Montana. Uh, did pick up some substantial amounts of snow and of course it blew around and created blizzard conditions. Uh, this little bit of a grainy map here, but it shows you the areas that got the most amount of snowfall from this. You can see out into uh, portions of western North Dakota, got upwards of three feet of snow in some locations, maybe even a touch more. Uh, for eastern Montana, a lot of areas did see that 8 to 12, maybe even pushing 18 plus inches in some isolated locations. But, you know, again, the, the big story with this was the uh, the blowing and drifting, uh, the potential impacts to agriculture. Uh, calving season is underway and uh, it wasn't the, the, the perfect form, but it was some relief from our overall drought picture. Uh, liquid precipitation amounts. This is just looking at April 13th, but you can see, again, so this is what was uh, the liquid content in the snow that fell. And you can see that a lot of areas did see, you know, between half and an inch of liquid precipitation in uh, east central Montana. Um, areas surrounding it, you know, more, a lot of uh, areas saw a quarter inch uh, plus. And uh, you can see the closer you get to the continental divide and the closer you get towards uh, western Montana, the lesser the precipitation totals. Again, central North Dakota being the big winner here, you know, close to two inches of liquid in some areas. So again, a pretty substantial uh, precipitation producer and of course producing all that snowfall. Some snow totals from around eastern Montana, you can see again, it varied uh, uh, greatly. Um, here in Glasgow, we just picked up a few inches of snow, uh, but other areas, you know, such as uh, uh, Weibo County, uh, so, you know, saw upwards of uh, a foot plus. Um, you can see uh, Glendive saw a foot. Uh, Crane, Montana, and Richland County saw 18 inches of snow. And of course, with those really strong 40 mile an hour winds, uh, a lot of drifting occurred, which again provides a lot of challenges for actually being able to measure the snowfall. Um, this is the, the best picture I've seen that kind of summed up this blizzard. This is a, actually in North Dakota again, but uh, courtesy of the North Dakota Department of Transportation, this image on the left. Uh, you can see just how big this drift was uh, on the interstate in North Dakota. And you can see that that is, you know, taller than that uh, um, uh, plow uh, that is uh, attempting to clear it. So again, uh, a lot of impacts, a lot, a lot of uh, um, huge drifts, a lot of huge snow totals. And uh, of all things, the interstate actually for a period of time, for a substantial period of time, was closed from Billings all the way to Jamestown. You know, that's a, a big deal to be able to shut down interstate commerce like that. It takes a major event, and this one really will be talked about um, for years to come, and that's what makes it a historic blizzard. So quick look back at our March uh, conditions, temperatures. You can see statewide average. We did finish a little bit above average, um, 101st warmest um, out of the, the period of record, and you can see that that was really consistent across the entire state, uh, east to west, uh, almost every county, uh, with very few exceptions finishing above average. So we were on the warm side for the month of March. Uh, precipitation wise, you can see most of eastern Montana again finishing dry, anywhere from below average to much below average precipitation totals uh, east of the Continental Divide. Uh, the one exception to this is far northwest Montana, which has uh, followed the recent trends of uh, seeing, you know, above average precipitation totals. So again, very isolated in nature up there in northwest Montana, but they have been doing better um, as a, 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 you know, as of uh, very recently, they've been doing uh, very good as far as precipitation totals go, while the rest of the state remains very much dry. So looking at our current month, April, this is uh, through the 20th, you can see that temperature wise, we have been very much on the cool side. You know, this is running, you know, six to 10 degrees below normal, very common for the entire state of Montana, as we have been so cool. And you can see that that trend is really true of the entire uh, northern high plains. You get into North Dakota and even into portions of Minnesota, again, finishing very much uh, on the cool side. Uh, the, the only areas that are really warm, um, the far uh, northeast portion of the, 
of the country, uh, New England area, and then of course the South, um, um, Arizona, uh, Southern California, New Mexico into Texas. And of course, we're starting to see fires uh, popping up as a result of some of these uh, warmer temperatures. Precipitation wise, again, it's nice to see that, uh, you know, we've got a lot of green here. That, that, that storm system, that big blizzard uh, did deliver some good precipitation again to portions of Eastern Montana. And you can see that we start to see some of that green, which indicates a little bit wetter conditions um, for a lot of areas in, in the far east. Uh, again, you can see uh, elsewhere, it's a little bit of a mixed bag, you know, plus or minus uh, a side of zero um, uh, departure from normal precipitation. So really a lot of areas, to, you know, hanging right near normal. Um, nationwide, you can see, again, that blizzard uh, into North Dakota really ramping up a lot of that precipitation. Again, it's unfortunate that this uh, uh, precipitation scale is so blocky, you know, zero to three inches is pretty substantial, but uh, you can see the Pacific Northwest again finishing uh, fairly wet, uh, Northern High Plains again fairly wet, and then uh, of course other portions of the country um, being wetter as well. Quick look at snow depth for the state of Montana, and you can see that we have melted a lot of that snow. So you know we got that upwards of 18 plus inches in some areas in far eastern Montana from that blizzard, and you can see we have melted most of it out. Just a little bit of snowfall remaining in far northeast Montana. Sheridan County looks like they've still got a little bit on the ground, but you can see a lot of that snowfall from Minot uh, towards Williston and north uh, continuing to hang out, you know, looking at upwards of 8 to 12 inches still on the ground, still trying to melt that away. Um, but of course, it's going to hang around because we do have that next storm system pushing in, so it'll be adding to those overall snow depths. Snow water equivalents by basin, you can see that the this recent storm has helped uh, prop up a lot of the, the snowpack in the mountains, which is good. This is our, our really good time of the year to be continuing to add to that snowpack. Although we have gone beyond peak snowpack historically uh, um, for this time frame, uh, But you can see the St. Mary and Milk in, in decent shape there at 118% of normal. Um, Sun Teton and Marias, again, uh, likewise, uh, still not doing too bad. But as you get further south, Smith, Smith Judas and Muscle Shell in the central part of the state, and then down into southwest uh, Montana, the headwaters of the Missouri, headwaters of the Yellowstone, um, not doing as well. Just looking at, you know, anywhere from 76 to 86 percent of normal. Um, ideally, we'd like to see 100 percent of normal. That's really what we would uh, historically want to ask for. Um, so not doing quite as well. Hopefully this next system will continue to add to that and help offset um, some of those deficits. And as you hop into the headwaters of the Yellowstone here and some of the feeder uh, rivers into the Yellowstone in Wyoming, you can see still in that 80 to 90 percent range. Uh, Tongue River uh, saw some good improvements there at 97 percent, Powder River 89 percent. So again, just short of that 100 percent mark, we're really hoping for that 100 percent of normal um, for precipitation wise. So hopefully this next system will uh, help us out and add to that. Again, charts showing uh, the upper Yellowstone and St. Mary's. You can both see that uptick here as of, uh, of as of late, and that's that last storm system. So again, we were uh, you know not doing very well in the upper Yellowstone at all, um, getting closer to the minimum amount of snowpack. But uh, this has really helped prop us up here. This last storm system, still looking at 84%. Of course, the St. Mary's doing a little bit better, 115% of normal, and you can see that that uptick really took us out of that that green area closer to the median and pushing us uh, into a little bit above average. So again, some, some good, good news there uh, for the St. Mary's and Milk Rivers. Quick look at Glasgow and Billings proper. Um, you can see here, we've seen a, a little bit of a recent um, warming trend, more closer to normal type temperatures, but still uh, relatively cool, but not uh, as cool as we saw when we got the, the big uh, precip event. Uh, but you can see here, Glasgow is still hanging about 72% of normal. Um, still not close to that 100% mark, unfortunately. Still reeling from the overall drought picture that has dominated for so many months now, you know, uh, 15 plus months of, uh, of drought conditions. And you can see Billings, uh, likewise, they were doing a little bit better at times here. You can see that for a period of time, February and March, they were actually above normal precipitation. But um, like so many areas in Montana, they've plateaued. And even with the recent precip, uh, you know, still looking at only 84% of normal. I did want to point out that, you know, Mile City is only at 44% of normal uh, there. So again, uh, very much in the drought uh, for Eastern Montana. It's, it's really continuing even with the recent precipitation. Quick look at, this is just January through March. This is from some of our cooperative stations out there, but uh, kind of captures again where we're at um, uh, compared to normal. A lot of areas, again, still reeling. Culbertson only at 48% of normal. And, and keep in mind, this does not consider that last uh, blizzard event. Um, this is ahead of it. So 
um, still, but still showing just how dry it is out there. You know, Brockway 52%, Circle 58%, Glendive doing a little bit better at 74%, Zortman 59%. You get towards uh, South Montana, Southern Montana, uh, Billings 74%, Baker 60%, 61%. Uh, Great Falls doing a little bit better at 82%, but uh, up on the high line, Haver only at 64% of normal precipitation. So again, still very much on the dry side, at least through March, and uh, continuing to feel the impact of those uh, that long-term drought that we've been in the middle of. And speaking of drought, here is uh, the latest drought monitor, and it shows just how impactful and how widespread these uh, you know severe to extreme drought conditions are for the state of Montana. And you can see that the, you know, really east of the Continental Divide, in, uh, including the Beaverhead area, um, really just reeling in those D2 to D3 extreme drought. And again, this is uh, rather alarming given the fact that, you know, we're in the spring months. This is the time we should be getting a lot of precipitation that we're still continuing to see these, these impactful um, drought conditions is a, a little bit uh, concerning to say the least. And you can see that that trend continues into northern Wyoming as well with those D3 to D2 um, moderate, excuse me, severe to extreme drought conditions dominating. So we are still in the middle of this 15-month uh, uh, drought, and uh, even though we have seen some recent precipitation, um, we, we should see some improvements in some areas, but again, that's going to be fairly isolated, and uh, we still expect much of Montana to continue to be dominated with those extreme to severe droughts going forward. So here's the big story now upcoming. We have the next blizzard on the way. Um, we had that that one um, middle part of the month, uh, 13th through the 15th, and now we are looking at another blizzard. Uh, this looks like it's going to start to lay in later this afternoon. Going to build up from south uh, to north as it, it pushes through eastern Montana. Looks like it's going to start out uh, as rain and then change over. Um, could see some freezing rain or sleep mixing in with this as well. Um, into Saturday morning, this is going to be a high impact event. You know, we are expecting uh, blizzard conditions uh, near the North Dakota border. Uh, you can see significant snowfall totals anywhere from eight to 18 inches across uh, portions of, uh, of uh, Eastern Montana. This is gonna be a, another uh, uh, big time snow producer. And uh, of course, with the winds that we expect, those strong north winds, uh, we, we do expect a blizzard condition. So if you need to take care of something, grab groceries, prescription drugs, uh, whatever you're going to need to make it through into early next week, I would advise you do so if you live uh, in the Yellowstone Valley, uh, down into southeast Montana, or even portions of uh, uh, western North Dakota. It's, it's going to be a major uh, winter storm. This is what we're looking at for a liquid equivalents out of the storm and you can see that you know glasgow area you know really not going to see a whole lot just 17 hundredths at this point as they get further north towards opime you know just a few hundredths uh, maybe a tenth of an inch uh, but the good news is again those mountain areas uh the headwaters of the yellowstone should see you know half an inch plus maybe an inch plus of uh, of liquid equivalent and then you can see southeast montana looks to get uh, two plus inches of liquid out of this and again it's going to begin as rain it's going to transition. Maybe you see some sleet and freezing rain mixing in uh, tonight, and then tomorrow we'll transition um, by tomorrow morning, uh, transitioning to all snow, um, and that's when we'll start to see those big impacts. So again, um, be aware, and of course, uh, monitor the latest forecasts uh, as we go forward into the tonight and, and into Saturday, and even into Sunday morning. Keep an eye on those weather forecasts. So here's our current suite of, of highlights. Uh, we can see a blizzard warning, which is highlighted by red, runs all the way from the Canadian border down into uh, eastern uh, Wyoming. So a large area is going to be impacted by these blizzard conditions. Again, this is a, a very serious situation. Uh, be advised that, uh, you know, again, with uh, the impacts to uh, newborn livestock is going to be uh, major, um, that there's going to be a lot of issues. So uh, take action now out ahead of the storm, because uh, as we get into tonight, you're probably not going to want to leave your house. Um, I would advise you to hold up. Um, you can see that we kind of have this book ended by some winter weather advisories, again, for that mixed precipitation potential for a little bit of lighter snow. You can see the southern tier of Montana has got some winter storm warnings in the pink. Uh, so, again, hopefully we continue to build some of that snowpack there. And then we even have some winter storm watches out in the central part of, of uh, North Dakota. So a very active um, highlight package um, in currently in effect for eastern Montana, western North Dakota, portions of Wyoming and South Dakota. So again, short-term forecast, uh, again, that major late season blizzard tonight into Sunday morning. Uh, we do have a possibility of another storm system uh, starting next Friday, so seven days out. A lot of uncertainty regarding this, uh, but it does look like we could pick up uh, another round of precipitation. A lot of details are very much up in the air. 
Uh, so I would just uh, advise you to monitor the latest forecast, but it does look like there's a potential for another good storm system uh, seven days out. Um, you can see that this uh, this is the seven days worth of precipitation totals. And again, you can see just that mark from southeast Montana, northeast Wyoming, all the way up into western North Dakota, northern North Dakota, and into Manitoba, and even into Ontario. So again, a pretty major storm system here uh, for the northern high plains. Now for the outlooks, 8 to 14 days, so we're looking at, uh, you know, um, two weeks out. Uh, looks like we favor below normal temperatures, so it looks to be on the cool side. And this is the good news, that uh, there's a pretty good bullseye there for above normal precipitation for eastern Montana. So, again, fingers crossed that we continue this wet pattern. We can continue to get precipitation, and let's hope that it changes uh, from snow and more favors rain, which is much more easy to manage with uh, uh, calving operations underway. This is the drought outlook uh, taking us out through the end of July and you can see that there's some response here in far eastern Montana and western North Dakota to maybe show a little bit of uh, improvement and maybe even some removal in western North Dakota of, of drought concerns. So um, a little bit of optimism here, but of course you can see that the biggest chunk of eastern Montana um, favors for that those drought conditions to persist, unfortunately. Our May outlook, again, some some uh, positivity to be had here, again, favoring below normal temperatures for much of eastern Montana and into North Dakota. Um, but I like this bullseye here continuing for eastern Montana for above normal chances for precipitation. Again, that's good news for the month of May. May tends to be one of our wetter months with our wettest month being June. So again, this is really a good news, um, a little bit of optimism to be had. This is our critical time to, to get precipitation in to help those crops grow, to help those grasses grow. And uh, if we can get above normal precipitation in May and even normal precipitation in June, uh, we'll be in much better shape to be able to handle uh, what's coming for the summer months. So beyond May, we have to look at three month increments. Um, so we're looking at May, June, and July here. And you can see that uh, while below normal precipitation is favored for Western Montana and even portions of Central Montana, I still feel a little bit optimistic with this near normal uh, potential for precipitation for a good chunk of Eastern Montana. Again. If we can get that normal precipitation into June or maybe even into July, that'll be a huge dent in uh, mitigating some of the impacts of this long-term drought. But of course, this is, uh, you know, we've got this big bullseye here um, across uh, Colorado that noses into to the northern Rockies and into the northern high plains here, favoring better chances for above normal temperatures. So we'll be, looks like we'll be transitioning towards warmer and uh, eventually, you know, making our way towards drier conditions unfortunately but again let's stay optimistic that we get those june rains that's really going to make or break us uh, looking at july august and september three month period you see big bullseye for above normal temperatures for montana big bullseye for below normal uh, precipitation for uh, northern high plains into montana to the northern rockies so it does look hot and dry uh, for the summer months and again, another quick plug for the cold advisory for newborn livestock. Um, just want to put this out there that this is available, especially when we're into these, uh, we're well into calving season now for a lot of uh, ranching operations. And you can see here that these are the links for it. Best way to find this is maybe uh, Google Cannell's uh, C-A-N-L, cold advisory for newborn livestock billings, Cannell uh, Glasgow, and uh, help you find these links here. But it, it is a really good uh, indice that shows what that threat really is for newborn livestock. You know, there are vulnerabilities out there in the open. Factors in things like wind chill, rain and wet snow, uh, humidity, any combinations of those things such as wind chills. Um, and it also factors in whether it's going to be cloudy versus sunny and really helps uh, uh, figure out what that mortality risk is for a newborn uh, calf or, or a, a sheep. And you can see here that the uh, this is the kennel for tonight into tomorrow morning for both Billings and Glasgow. And you can see we are in that extreme category with that uh, that system building in with that cold rain turning over to snow, maybe some freezing rain mixing in as well. So again, be uh, weather aware here as we get into this blizzard, it's going to be uh, very impactful. Um, you know, monitor social media, monitor your weather service webpage, monitor your favorite media source, television or radio. Uh, make sure it's reliable because there's uh, again, it's going to be a very dynamic situation again a uh, very dangerous situation out there in far eastern montana western north dakota with those blizzard conditions so uh just be uh, uh, weather aware here and uh, stay safe our next briefing it will be around may 19th 2022 thank you for attending <music>